Hello guys and welcome to a brand new video. Today I'm here with The Legend of Korra book 3 episode number 3 and 4 reactions. Alright the previous two episodes. Episode number 1 and 2 was really good. Um, I'm really liking the starting of this uh, whole like you know season and um, so what basically happened was after Korra made the decision of letting all the spirits and people you know like live together like you know let them mingle with each other and just kept the portals open <coughs> things are not kind of going well in republic city uh vines are growing and spirits are just like doing whatever they want to so the people are mad and obviously raiku as always had to just you know like make the whole situation even more messy he could have just cooperated with Korra and just say like all right like yeah you messed up no problem we'll try to solve this together but no he blames it on Korra and all that stuff he does reporters are also on her case and it's just a mess and people have started uh, getting bending powers now um there have been airbenders popping up one like you no know, once and twice and now Boomy got airbending which is really good and uh, yeah things are kind of uh, messy so like you know all that included by the end of it Korra is just like you know driven out of Republic City by Raiku and she's like yeah I'm going to go on my own way and make the like you know like again build up the air nation and he she alongside Tenzin and all her, like you know her friends uh, team avatar everyone goes uh, to <coughs> recruit new people <clears throat> on the journey um, they thought that everyone will willingly just go and help them out but no, no one wants to live their, like, you know, leave their life, their family and everything. So no one's actually joining them. And they were like, you know, almost giving up. But by the end of it, uh, we actually meet a single person. I forgot the kid's name, um, but, you know, he joined us. But turns out he has some other plans. He is like, you know, like, like, he's like a person, like, he kind of stole stuff, tried to get out from the police and even like you know like and even trying to like you know just lie to Korra and his crew as well but he did apologize but I don't trust him neither does Marco so yeah let's see I'm, I'm sure he's probably going to try something funny in the future as well so we need to keep our eyes open you know like who knows maybe I don't know like he, he might like just grab something and try to run away so we'll see we'll see about that I feel like this kid will probably you know kind of uh warm up to us or something like that is going to happen uh i get that vibe from him but we'll see about that so let's get started this is episode number three of the legend of Korra, book three so i'll be putting the subtitles on the timer here take it to whichever is your preference and let's get started all right here's the countdown three two one go Oh, okay. Guy, <clears throat> <laughs> yeah, that's his name. Okay. Oh, yeah, we made Zuko. True. I, I forgot that for a moment. All right, let's go to Ba Sing Se. All right. <laughs> yes. All right, Airbender versus Airbender. Oh no, this kid is going to just, yeah. Oh boy. Boom is like, okay, I feel like this kid is just pulling the wool over everyone. Kai, I'm talking about. <laughs> Earth Queen. Okay. Yo. 
Yeah, this is something about the grandma, so yeah, maybe we'll meet her or something. Hmm. Great wall of bossing, say, look at that. Oof, it's been a while we've come here, you know. Like back in Avatar. A lot of things happened here, so yeah. Yeah. No one did that left. Hmm. People doesn't seem Okay, that was the lower ring. And here we are. The palace, yep. Ooh. Damn. Yeah, more things to steal, you know. <laughs> hmm. Gone. Okay. Oh my god, Bolin and his... Yeah. Okay, she does seem demanding. Oh my god. Alright, that sounds better. <laughs> He's like, I'm tired of this, you know? Oh my god, he's up! Uh, great, as I said, he's just looking for things to s <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Oh, this is the queen? Okay. Okay. What the? Oh my god. Yeah, she's quite demanding. Oh wow, that was handy. Who are you? <laughs> Finally. Yes. Ah. Uh. Well, what are you? Oh my god. Great. She is that type of a person. Okay. Yeah, why are you telling her? What the hell is... Oh god. Maybe it's because the taxes are very... Okay. <laughs> He's like, oh my god, I'm tired of this. Each and every day. I cannot. Yeah. Uh, not run away, but you know. <laughs> yeah, I doubt that. That's true. <laughs> yeah. Oh no, she would not be happy about that.
Just for a favor or something. Yeah, there you go. Oh. <laughs> this, look, this looks like some kind of a RPG. Like, you go to do something and the queen gives you some other task to do. Oh my god. <laughs> Poor guy. He's just... He was just like, yeah, I cannot. Wow, oh, this place is beautiful. The little butterflies just... Oh, damn. Okay, that's Kai, isn't it? Yep, that's Kai. Yep. Yep, Marco saw that. Oh god. Your new family. <laughs> oh no. Oh boy. Wow. Wow. Okay. Oh. Nice. <laughs> oh, damn. Yeah, good excuse. <clears throat> oh, okay, now you're going too far, kid. Like, what the hell? Oh boy. Um. <laughs> <laughs> well, sweet journey. Ah, well, at least they're getting a good sightseeing, you know, trip. Oh my god. Yeah. Oh no. Oh my god, guy took it. Ah. The little brother. <laughs> uh, yeah. So what do we do now? Walk back? <laughs> like, how long will that take? God damn. Yeah, maybe do some... Wow. Great bowling. That just lifted my mood. <laughs> oh god. Hmm. I don't know. She kind of she kind of smirked a little bit, you know. <laughs> Just <laughs> um okay bowling yep he is look at him so scared oh that looks really good <laughs> <That's good>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and the people in it as well you know <laughs> so gullible just what? What is that? Yeah, but we don't have any. Ch oh, oh no. Oh. Oh God! Oh, yo! <laughs> wow, this. Ah. Uh. 
fruit is <laughs> insulting our fruit. <laughs> Wait! Oh my god, it's... No, it's... I doubt this... God damn, Bolin. Is this the dad? Oh no, the, maybe the uncle or something. There you go. Uncle. Okay, they really met their family. That's nice. Oh, it's kind of snow. Roku's here. Not Roku, sorry. Um, Zuko, sorry. He, they look so similar. <laughs> hmm. Okay. Ice prison. Oh, that's how they recognize them. <laughs> Come on, they they struggled, you know. Ah, they know they. Oh. Yep. Oh! Wow, there's like a... Whoa, so many people! Oh, is this a grandma? There you go! You know what? I... Okay, for a moment I thought, are they scamming them or something? But no, no, no. Oh. Ah, uh, yeah, they didn't know. I don't know why, but that scene kind of like I at first I thought are they like scamming them or something like you know. But then I'm when the, we saw grandmother's face, I was like, no, nah, no, nah, they're they're genuine. Hmm. <laughs> Oh my god, I feel like Oh people might try to just Oh no. Yeah, okay, yep, that's why the queen actually sent them here. They're gonna get attacked. Oh my god, here we go. There you go. Oh wow. <laughs> just left the money. Yep. Now nah, you're the avatar. You can deal with this. <laughs> All right. Whoa, what the? Yo, it's just. <laughs> All right, come on. As, as a, okay, nice. Oh, good. Oh my God, they scooped up the. Okay, there you go. Nice. Wow. Na oh. Perfect. And that takes care of that. Run away. <laughs> yeah, we can see that. Oh. Yeah. So they're not like, you know, just normal like thieves or bandits. They, they're people who. From whom this is. Okay. <laughs> All right, Zahir may come here over, you know, like the final prisoner. 
flee. What? Yeah, we know that, we remember that. <laughs> Zuko as always. <laughs> Oh my god. Well, this reminded me of that scene, you know? That's rough, buddy, you know? Like, my girlfriend tower turned into the moon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh lord. Oh damn, who's... Okay. <laughs> so many of them. Hmm. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Uh. Oh. Yeah. Wow. It's like, you know, like, I'm glad that uh, Marco came, you know, when Bolin was saying in the first episode, he was kind of joking about the whole thing, but I'm glad he came. Yeah. Wow, she has no plans of helping them. Great. All right. Yeah, let's take the money back with us, you know? Oh boy. Uh. Oh! Wow. Still eating. What? Do they know anything about that? Go. Oh, my God. Wow. What the hell? What? Yeah, look at the guy just doing his thing. Oh my god. He, he might get nabbed by the Daily. Oh my god, yeah, that's what's going to happen. Ah! Uh. You're having too much fun, kid. Now look at what happened. Oh boy. So are they being brainwashed? Just like we saw before? Army. Oh my god. Well, great. 
Yeah, this place has gone. Ah, uh, this place is just bad now. Plain bad. Like, ah, uh, like it was like the passing say after <clears throat> we were able to drive the Fire Nation away. Like everything looked well enough, I guess. But now look at this. Like, yeah, that like that, this. This is what's going to happen, you know. Like people just like even if like you know certain era or certain age it's peaceful obviously there will be people who will succeed the current king or queen and yeah they might not turn out to be as good or as capable as their predecessors and yeah this is what's going to happen because of that the like the the people sitting in the top won't suffer the, the people you know like the normal ordinary people they're they're they are all who are going to suffer and yeah like great ba sing say ah, we need to just you know like i feel like we need to actually do something here yeah like this is not good okay <clears throat> this episode we <clears throat> begin with um <laughs> kai and boomy them kind of doing their air bending and practicing training against each other Excuse me. <clears throat> yeah. And oh boy, Kai is just very good at airbending and Boomy is just <laughs> you know, just being Yeah. And here we can see like you know he, he just grabbed his wallet and I feel like that that was like you know kind of like a practical joke he played over there. Because obviously he just showed everyone that oh look at this, I got the wallet. <laughs> and that was not like and he was not actually trying to steal it but it was just like a joke but after that we can see he's pretty serious about taking money from others <laughs> but yeah okay the first part um we go to ba sing se we can see obviously like you know, the lower ring it's just you know, not the conditions conditions are not good at all the middle ring it's okay the upper ring as always it's good and we get down and Kai is like oh boy new place look at this like you know everyone's so rich here ah like perfect place to do my thing and he just goes off on his own way to steal stuff <laughs> and oh my god like uh <laughs> I, I feel like after getting captured you know like I'm sure we'll, we'll go and save him um I'm sure he will actually learn his lesson this time and yeah we'll see we'll see about that but yeah <clears throat> they come to this place and uh we get to know from this um guy this uh this who is this the secretary or whatever for the, for the queen i don't know who what, he, i think he introduced himself let me check grand here we go Grand Secretariat Gun. Okay, Gun. Gun is his name. That's a very simple name to remember. Gun. So, Gun. He he takes them and he like just tells them that you know what, like you know, you are not supposed to do this in front of the queen. You're not supposed to do that. This, that, this, that, all that stuff. And it's like, yeah, I hate my job. This <laughs> this is definitely not you know what I signed up for and like there's so many things and we can like you know obviously we we heard we've heard before as well that this queen is a little bit demanding and i don't think this is demanding at all this is more than demanding this is just intense he she's just just like you know, finding problems in everything that's what type of a person she is uh when we meet him okay so we get to the queen and now interesting thing there's a few things that we could see here this queen has uh first of all she we can see that she's extremely selfish you know like she just wants everything that you know like that she she the way she likes it other than that she 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 wouldn't tolerate anything it's just like oh this this little thing it's not good enough just scrap that whole thing down and make it again and not only that because of that i'm also guessing a lot of the people here are also kind of suffering because of her uh this type of uh like you know her doing it like this now 
another thing we can see here is she is not happy at all with the avatar she's saying she said something about like oh your uh, like you know your previous you know like reincarnation the avatar and the fire lord they just made like you know like this like an you know, like a you know, like a just tried to convert this place into their nation or something like that she said where is that part um here we go took advantage of my i'm guessing uh her father I, is, is that guy uh yeah it's, it must be you know I, I don't remember his name um the guy who had the bear who we met you know in ba Sing Sein, avatar the, the king i'm guessing the father is that person so wait interesting thing his father her i think i'm, I'm guessing that's her father she he loved his bear like you know it's, and that's an animal but this kid does not kid but you know his kid that is the queen current queen does not like animal at all that's kind of interesting and didn't expect it would be something like that you know because as as we know his father adored the bear but yeah so <clears throat> the queen she she says uh you know like the avatar and the fire lord took advantage of my father's weakness and stole our lands to make their own little empire Ugh. the united republic is earth kingdom territory yeah now okay so this thing as soon as she said that i realized that she probably has no like you know, after she gets to know that cora came here to recruit airbenders i was pretty sure she would have no intention of helping them out because you know like cora is telling that oh i'm going to take the airbenders with me which obviously she's not happy about the fact that the earth like you know the fire lord actually tried to like you know uh like you know as she said like took f advantage of my father's kindness and tried to like you know kind of capture a little portion or something like that according to her you know like stole stole yeah that's the word according to her he tried to steal her land and uh you know so obviously cora asking to recruit airbenders that is something that she will definitely not allow. I, I realized that at that moment. But then she said something about, oh, so, you know, like, okay, now another thing. She said a few other problems they're having um, is, where is it? What's left of my kingdom is falling to ruin. Roving bands of barbarians are raiding villages in the countryside. And now some of my subjects are refusing to pay their taxes. When I was reacting, I just said, like, maybe just because you're, you kind of, like, you know, take everything from them, you know, your taxes rate are extremely high or something. Maybe because of that. Turns out it's true. We got to get to know in the end of it. And, like, oh, my God. Like, here another person who is just incompetent. You know, like, like what's up with the leaders in this show? I don't understand. Like, like, like look at Raiko. Now this queen, like, what the hell is wrong with them? Like, I could say, like, at least Raiku is just plain, like, you know, stupid, you can say. Like, you know, like, certain decisions he takes are just very stupid. But at least he is not actually being tyrannical, you know, on his people. Oh, but that's because of democracy, I guess. <laughs> Maybe because of that. I don't know. But this queen, you know, like, she... She doesn't even care. She's basically just bullying his her citizens because you know, like because she just wants that to be that way. And and now that her like you know the, the whole country is going into ruin because of her own like you know like I'm guessing her own uh, like you know taxes the way she like you know rules her kingdom just because of that her kingdom is going to completely be destroyed. Uh, econ econ economically, she she's blaming it actually on roku and uh, not roku my god zuko why am i mixing them up <laughs> zuko and uh ang he's blaming it on them like wow great job like yeah maybe like you know maybe because you know this kid like you know this queen maybe because she should I, I doubt she even realizes that she's actually the reason you know why this is actually happening 
and oh my god like i don't understand like the the leaders of this like you know this uh this season season three are just so oh boy but yeah she's like you know what i'll help you you do a job for me and like the, she says something about like there being vaults and to bring the money to them now like i realized why she actually sent the avatar there because i'm guessing multiple times she probably tried to get the money from that vault to here to her place but it failed because you know the 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 people the bandits or whatever you can call them they were ready waiting for them and you know to stop them so she probably was at her wits end and didn't know what to do so now that Aang, like you know Korra is here she's like oh this is a great opportunity let me just use them and like you know just then I'll, I'll tell them to get out and yeah so okay she gives them that task while here Mako and Bolin they're trying to find Kai and Kai is just doing his own thing like stealing from people and all and like you know they kind of go through that chase <laughs> and oh boy Kai is just too what can I say like, you know too good he I, I I really don't understand how is he able to so like you know quickly master airbending like he's using airbending as if he knows that from his birth or something just just you know the maneuvering the whole thing and yeah like he's just too good at it <laughs> I don't know why he's so good at this so but yeah we get we get into the train Kai gets into the train Marco is there almost get, gets him but oh boy Kai tricks them again and just leaves them in the train <laughs> and they're stuck you know in the lower ring they don't have any money nothing and they're like yeah like we cannot go we're gonna get out from here so my guess was they would probably do some odd jobs here and there, earn some money and then go back. Uh, something like that they'll do because obviously we don't have any concept of phone here. There's no phone. You can't just call Cora and be like, oh, I need help. But you can't do that. <laughs> yeah. All right. And then we go shift to this. Oh, no. Then we uh, see them like, you know, they spend the night over there. And Kai is just having a great time. Kai's just like, you know, like just eating and just lazing around. And oh boy, like this place, ah, uh, this place is just so perfect for Kai. He's like, yeah, all the people here are sort of gullible. I can just steal stuff from them and just have a great time. Now, I really do wonder what's his story, you know, because I'm not completely sure if his whole uh, story about his dad and mom dying, all that stuff is true or not. I really am not. Maybe it's true, but at least what he's doing now, my trust in him is actually depleting. And I really am not sure if the story she told about his mom and dad are actually true or is it something else? No, oh wait, sorry. Um, He did say, I think the, the guard said, the sheriff said that he's been orphaned from the beginning, like, you know, something like that. Like we, we, we don't know anything about her mom and dad. So who knows, you know, maybe, he has some idea what happened to his parents or something and he's just not telling anyone but anyways enough about that but yeah like i i <laughs> i really don't trust him and like what can i say like he is like making trouble for them but yeah i can't get angry at him at all because you know he's just a kid he's kind of doing this in like you know in this type of a way and he he really needs some guidance you like you know you you cannot expect him to just know everything because you know he he grew up alone and no one has actually taught him that oh you should not do this you should not do that i'm sure he realizes that whatever he's doing is wrong but no one was there to actually discipline him or punish him so yeah that's why i'm saying i cannot actually get angry at him because he he needs guidance that's basically it you know like if even if even after guidance he actually does does this and then keeps this going then i might be disappointed in him or get angry but no at at least at this stage 
you know, I feel like Cora or like you know like and them they they really need to actually teach him and like you know like let him know and I feel like this this will be a good teaching experience you know like he got captured by the end of it and I'm sure we're going to come and help him out so I feel like he he will actually learn a lot from this so we'll see okay now Marco and um Bolin go to a fruit stand and <laughs> It's like the guy in the fruit stand, uh, he's like, oh, like, you know, you are bad mouthing my fruit. You no, know, like, and like, you, know, you won't steal my fruit. My fruits are not worth to be stolen. <laughs> Marco is like, wait, what do you want? Do you want us to steal it or not? And he's like, oh, you're trying to steal it. And then just jumps at them like, my God, that was a funny scene. And uh, yeah, and the dad comes and. I knew it. I when like you know when he, he kind of looked at him at the Marco and Bolin and he kind of became surprised. I I knew it. I thought like he's probably either like their uncle or some kind of relative. And yeah, his uncle. And then we go and meet um, Zuko, Zuko and Tonrak. They're here in front of Eska and Desna. And um, Roku says, uh, not Roku. My God, Zuko. <laughs> Zuko says. Like, I, why, you know, why I'm just, just mistaking his name for Roku all this time? Because, you know, whenever I see his face, you know, I, I've been accustomed to the young Zuko all this time. So whenever I'm seeing his face, the first thing that strikes me is Roku. And I'm just, like, you know, just saying Roku. And then I'm realizing this is not Roku. This is actually Zuko. <laughs> Zuko is not that little kid anymore. He's, he's an old man now. And... <laughs> I'm realizing that after that, so yeah, I'm just making mistakes. I'm just calling him Roku now, just time to time, and then realizing that oh, this is not Roku, this is Zuko. <laughs> oh god. Mm. But yeah, Zuko comes with Ton Rock, and he's like, okay, there's like a prisoner here. We want to go there. And uh, all right, Marco and Bolin, they go and you know like meet their family you can say like so many people now you know what actually happened here i actually kind of started suspecting at this point like you know when they opened the door and there were so many people for a moment and they were like oh welcome welcome you know like they didn't even question like you know them when when the uncle said like oh this is marco and bolin everyone said yeah welcome they didn't even question them or anything just accepted them like that you know I was like, wait a minute, what is happening here? Is this like some kind of scam? No, are they getting involved in some scam where there's like people like this who just like, you know, bring people in and you know, act friendly and then rob them of everything or something? Like I, I've seen like, you know, scams like this in anime before where they kind of scam them like, you know, by just acting as their distant relative or something. So for a moment, I actually, I thought like, okay, are they getting scammed or something? Like what's happening? Why are they accepting them so easily? But then when the grandma stood up and the grandma was like, oh, welcome, you know, like, and it says like, where is your dad and your mom, where's son and your mother? That's when I'm like, okay, never mind. Like, yeah, these, these are genuine people. They're actually their family. And this is not any scam. And uh, yeah, like, you know, like, I can't blame me. You can trust anyone in this day and age. Like, you know, like, <laughs> just <laughs> you need to be careful. Like, you can can't get scammed anywhere. Like, you know, like, just like, like this even, like, you know, like, just someone say like, oh, I'm your distant uncle, you know, like, hello there. And they bring you to like, you know, a group of people, then just beat you up and get, grab all your money and just run away. Like that can happen easily. So <laughs> you can't trust anyone. <laughs> so yeah, I, I was a little bit suspicious, but now nah, then as soon as she and you know, the grandma said that where's son and your mother, I was like, yeah, these, these are genuine people. They are actually their family okay now we shift to Korra and uh, Asami again and here we go I knew obviously something is going to happen these people they come out with the money and yeah like some bandits or whatever they were like you know waiting for them and they start coming and just trying to get the money from them now at first I was like okay these are maybe these are like bandits or something they were just waiting for them but then after like you know they beat them up and oh boy, that, that, that scene was really good, like, you know, like, as always, Korra is obviously the avatar, he, she can handle herself, but I always, some, like, you know, I always get fascinated by 
uh, the way Asami fights most of the times because he, she's just a normal like you know human being. She doesn't have any bending power, nothing. She she's just good with martial arts and has like one gadget, that electrical thing that she has. And with that, she's able to perform so well. So you know, like 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 in always looking looking at Asami fight, it, I'm I'm more impressed at that than seeing Korra fight because obviously Korra is the avatar. She can handle herself, but Asami as well. Like that's really nice to see. And she, she like you know, she it was not that like you know Asami uh, like you know just weighed down Korra. Nothing like that happened. Asami was able to hold you know like the battlefield on her own and even like you know, supported Korra. So that was great. You know, without being a bender, that was amazing. And uh, yeah, now okay, then they get get the money. The final person, uh, you know, the, the, the one who looked like the boss over here, he was like, you're on the wrong side of this fight, Avatar. That gold belongs to the people, not the queen. And that's when I realized, like, yeah, these are not bandits. They are actually people who are trying to get the money back because this is basically because of high taxes. You know? The queen doesn't even probably care about his, her people. The people who are in the middle ring or the upper ring, you know, uh, they can pay this amount of taxes, but not the people in the lower ring. Obviously, they basically are just like looting them in this in this manner. The queen is just taking all the money from the people, and the lower ring people are actually su suffering because of that. And she doesn't even care. She she doesn't care about that. So that's why these people were actually here. And I'm like, yeah, okay, these are not some ordinary bandits. They are actually people who probably, you know, I'm, I'm guessing they had the plan of actually grabbing the money and then going back and giving it back to all the people or something, something like that. I'm guessing they had that goal. So it, like, you know, they, they, they are genuinely the good people if, if, if you see it in that manner. And I guess the, you know, the, the person in the end, he says the correct thing, like you're in the wrong, you know, side avatar, you know, you're actually helping the queen, not us, the people who actually need this money. The queen, like, you know, just is robbing us of everything and you're helping that out. And Korra was, at the end Korra was like, yeah, I also feel he's correct, you know, I am probably in the wrong side now. Alright, and then we go back to uh, Zuko again, Zuko, Eskadesna and Tonrak. And... Uh, Zuko says, like, uh, there's a powerful air uh, firebender here who has been, uh, you know, like, uh, kept, whose name is Flea. Flea, who can create explosions with her mind. Okay, that's interesting. Now, <laughs> the thing that he says after that, <laughs> he's like, I, I, like, you know, back in my day, you know, I also hired another person. Ironically, I hired a guy with a similar ability to kill the avatar myself once. And he just, he just becomes quiet. Tonrak is looking at him weirdly because obviously the avatar now is actually his daughter. <laughs> Even though the avatar Zuko is talking about is a different avatar still, you know. <laughs> it's kind of, not just not even responding. <laughs> that was so awkward. That scene. And Zuko's just looking at them and Zuko's like, wait, wasn't the joke, like, you know, was, wasn't that supposed to be an actual joke from my end? So why are they not responding? Why are they not laughing at this? <laughs> and then he's like, oh, I probably forgot the punchline. And he's like, didn't work. <laughs> oh my god, and so awkward. And oh my god. And then Eska's just like, I don't feel bad. I tried to kill Korra after she ruined my wedding. <laughs> Don Rakin's like, what? <laughs> it happens. Oh my god. <laughs> Yo, this scene was so awkward. And oh boy, this, this gives out the same, not at the same energy, I would say, because obviously the whole, you know, uh, like, you know, my girlfriend turned into the moon. Oh, rough. Like, you know, what, what did Suka say? Rough. This, no. Rough, but no, what did he say? I forgot. Ah, that, that iconic scene. That's rough, buddy. Something like that. Yeah, that's what he said, I think. You know, obviously that's way more, you know, like superior to this scene. But I feel like this scene also had like the same, kind of the same energy as that. 
<laughs> just awkwardness and weird conversation like my god zuko he has not changed <laughs> even his old age oh my god oh ah oh, okay and all right they go to this place and we can see a little glimpse of that girl uh behind the bars and yeah all right and then we go back to marco and bolin they're having a great uh, like, you know a huge meal and they're happy and then they you know like talk about their family their father and their mother and you know like the uncle kind of says about how like you know they had like a fight with with their dad you know his father son i think had a fight with his dad and they went away the grandmother takes him and gives him gives them like shows them the picture their family picture you know and with the little letter and marco gives the scarf to the grandma and that was a like sweet scene nice scene and again we go back to cora now and yeah the queen has no intention of helping them the queen is like yeah like i don't know like there's no airbender here uh, <laughs> before this in basin said there was no war and now there's no airbenders so basically it's the same there's no war in basin say in avatar the last airbender and now in cora <laughs> The legend of Korra there's no airbender in Basing say so yeah uh so yeah Korra is just like yeah I'm going to see you guys like and I'm I'm going I'm going to remember this and she just goes away and the queen doesn't even care so all right so and then uh Marco and Bolin gets to know that the airbenders have been missing you know and then they realize something is happening they're being kidnapped or something uh uh, one thing that was kind of weird, uh, the grandma seems to be very respectful of the queen. I don't know why that was the case. I, I don't know. But anyways, um, yeah, they're kidnapping the airbenders and oh boy, I knew what was coming after that. Kai is just going completely crazy with his airbending. So obviously the Dai Li is here, just grabs him, gets him into the prison and they're like, oh, we're going to do our experiment. And uh, yeah, you'll be one of the test subjects or whatever or guinea pig so yeah he's in trouble and uh, yeah let's see what's going to happen after this excuse me <clears throat> okay so that was episode number three yeah of the legend of korra book three let's start with episode number four so i'll be putting the subtitles and the timer here thank you to whichever is your preference and let's get started all right here's the countdown three two one go ah <sighs> There's no airbender in Basing Se, you know. <laughs> yeah. So in harm's way, okay. Oh, is this a prisoner? Yeah, oh boy. Ooh. Oh my god. Hmm. Maybe it's... Yeah, maybe that's... I was just going to say that. Damn, look at him. Wow. Wow. All right. <laughs> Good camouflage, you know. Yeah, these people are strong. Like, oh wait, he fought with Zahir before. Damn. Oh. <laughs> Whoa. Ah! 
Wow, this is insane. Okay. My god, yeah. Ah, oh. oh, there she is. Lee, I think that was her name, yeah. Bingo. Okay. She's tall. Oh my god. Yeah, it's like the same type of ability. It's the third eye. Wow. Oh, Zuko's here? Come on, Zuko. You're the Fire Lord. Uh... Oh! Yeah, this is a problematic f ability, you know? Ooh, Zuko, come on! Oh my god, this ability is a pain. Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> well. Gotta do what you gotta do, you know? <laughs> oh. Nice. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> Medium here. <laughs> huh? Queenie Smirk. Okay, calm down, Cora. Yeah. Oh no, Babu. Okay, there. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Nice and concise. <laughs> Wait, what? She's here? Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. We're not going there. No, we're staying here. You know what? Yeah, unleash Babu at her. Unleash Babu at her. Unleash. Oh! <laughs> God. Nah, we're planning on staying here. <laughs> <laughs> 
Ya. Ya. Yeah. Okay, Boomy. It's uh, yeah. This is a die lead, so. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Good. Oh, really? Wow, Jinoro is like the most useful person out of <laughs> any of them. <laughs> okay. Yeah, checking taking Genora here was a correct decision. Shut up. Ah. What the hell? Oh no, I feel like Oh no. Is he tr tricking him? Okay, no. Oh my god, he's genuinely not good at it. Ah. Uh. Oh god damn, this is just. All right. Is it working? Yeah. Okay. And they're under what? Oh. oh, she wasn't able to find them. Okay, maybe it's on another place. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, Tenzin! <laughs> Alright. <sighs> oh my god. Oh my god. Okay, well. You know what? Return those rocks back to him. That'll be nice. Just smack him in the head. Oh my god, nah, it's too much. Ugh. Yes, come on. Ugh. Yeah. Like, yeah, it's, it's kind of impossible.
Oh, there, there she is, Genora. So we need to. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so what? Yeah, where are we? <laughs> okay. So, where is this place? Okay. Okay, okay. So, we're in the wrong place. <laughs> Blasting jelly. <laughs> wow. Morse <laughs> code. Babu in. Babu's like, nah, I'm not getting in. But he still has PTSD, you know. You can't do anything about that. <laughs> oh, wait, what? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Jensen. <laughs> Well, yeah, I also want to know who is here. Oh, oh, okay. But nice. Oh, the queen will have a <laughs> the queen will get a surprise of her life, you know. <laughs> ah! Yes. Well. Wow. <sighs> oh, more guards. Okay. Wait, where's the sun? Yeah, calm down. Yeah. All right, let's go. <laughs> Fool me. Ah! Uh, oh, there you go. There's a zombie. I was like, where is she? Yeah, she, she needs to be in the airship. Oh, nice. We got her. 
<laughs> Boom is just having <laughs> Not Boom is sorry, it's Bolin. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's go. <laughs> oh my god. Oh. Nobody cares. Mm. You know what, what? What will be the best? We take the queen hostage or something. That would be the best. Oh my god. Okay. Ah. Take her hostage. Shut up. Take her hostage. That's the best way I can see this, like, you know, going well. Just take her and just fly away or something. Ho! Yeah, you're fighting. You're fighting the airbenders here. Let's go. Nice. Yeah, these are the daily. They are highly trained, you know. But yeah, let's see. Ooh. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh. Damn. Nice. There you go. You got your revenge. Oh boy. Uh, you know what? This might really start a war. I'm feeling like, you know. Uh, Raiko will not be happy about this. <laughs> oh god. Mm. They don't even care. Oh my god! Oh! Yo! Come on! Nice! Yes! That was... That was good. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Yeah, there you go. I feel like Tenzin doesn't realize like what he was doing before as well was kind of the same what the queen was doing. So he realizes it. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well. So we're splitting up now, yeah. And that's the end. Wow. Alright, that went well, you know, the whole thing.
Uh, one thing did not go well was Zuko, you know, trying to stop Zaheer. That did not go well. But other than that, everything went well in this episode. So first we see uh, Zuko versus uh, Zaheer and the other two. I forgot their name. And <clears throat> okay, so these people are very strong, as we can see that you know Zaheer um, and all the other uh, the others. And oh god, so one thing like you know like I, I realized like they kind of explained it later on. Like Tonrak had actually fought him before, and as we got to know in the later on later section that Tonrak and um, Zuko and who else? Saka. Yeah, uh, they were the ones who actually apprehended these three and put them to jail. So I I'm kind of curious. So. Uh, but I guess I don't know like did they get stronger or something like then how were they not able to stop them here? Like like Zuko was here. Um, so was Town Rock. The only one who was missing was Saka, but we had Eska and Desna in that in her his place So shouldn't we be able to handle them, but I guess because um uh, I don't know maybe maybe because they unlocked their new powers or something or is that the reason why or maybe they had like advantage yeah it's probably that like they had the advantage of surprise and everything so they got in like you know like all the time it's easier to defend no it's easier to attack yeah than to defend it's always that so you know since we're in the defensive position here it was difficult for us to defend they just got in and just grabbed um the girl flea i think that was her name and just got out of here and like zuko uh, i feel like probably because of his age i don't know he he was fighting really well but at the same time you know like it did seem he was a little bit you know kind of um you know weaker than he was before obviously he is old now and when he was at his prime he was just like you know like a, a fearful what can i say like he, you know like a force to be just Beyond, I think that's what you called it. That's what the word is. So yeah, he was just, just strong. So like you know, so just uh, amazingly strong. But now, as we can see, it's probably his age. You know, because we saw that scene. You know, when he gets knocked down, like, like for like a couple of seconds, he was just knocked out. He wasn't even moving. You know that scene when he gets knocked down and he just falls down and like you know, Tonrak they are just still fighting. But Zuko's just lying there. And then like you know, it took him like five or seven seconds to just get up. It seemed like he was just knocked out at that moment. So that that probably like you know like uh, I think that that's probably the reason why like he he is not like you know in like you know young anymore. And it's sad think thinking about it, but nothing you can do like you know like time will go on and you cannot stop that. Um. Uh, another thing, I feel like another thing was the reason why they were able to, uh, you know, Zuko was so overpowered. Probably because this was not his home ground. You know, this like this place was freezing cold, and he's a firebender. So you know, like it was very advantageous for Zahir and uh, you know that girl, that fire waterbender girl, uh, to just you know come here and just attack them or something. So yeah, probably because of that as well, Zuko was a little bit weaker. But yeah, okay. Now, as we can see, now what is this thing? I don't understand. Like, obviously, that's not a third eye. That was a best painting. We even saw in Avatar: The Last Airbender, you know, the third eye as a painting. So, is does all the people who have this power of uh, bending fire with their mind do this? Like, you know, like paint an eye on their head? Uh, is do they do that because it helps them, like, you know, to focus or something? Maybe, maybe because of that, like, you know, like, I guess you actually need like a place, you know, like to think like, oh, from here, the fire bending will come since it's something that you're doing from your mind, you're bending fire with the mind, you know, I think you need to like focus in one part and making the eye third eye in the forehead probably helps them concentrate. Like, I don't know, this is just my guess. That's why, you know, like they, they paint the eye and that's why always they focus in the forehead. Uh, and that's from where the bending starts and you can bend fire through your mind like that It's probably because of that they paint the eye in their forehead 
or, or I, don't, I don't know maybe maybe it's just their culture or something who knows but yeah it looks cool you know like the third eye okay so <clears throat> yeah they easily just overwhelm them and just get out of there and yeah all the three of the uh, prisoners are with them uh not, not three sorry four are together now and yeah things will get messy now i'm guessing but yeah okay so bolin marco they just like you know move on their way and you know, they say goodbye to their family and uh yeah it's like they, they get the new passport that you know their his, his cousin their cousin brought for them <laughs> and uh, okay so then we see them actually coming to Korra and Asami. Korra and Asami are training. They come and Marco, not Marco, sorry, Bolin just explains everything them, to them in a very concise manner. Marco does have to elaborate after that. <laughs> but yeah, so they get to know that the queen was actually tricking them and the queen comes. The queen comes. The queen is like, oh, we actually found out that this place what place did they did she say um where is it uh receive word that the yang province there you go the yang province they have airbenders uh, i'm sure that that uh, news is probably true but at the same time she was just trying to like make them leave and she came here she's like yeah you you can go there there's no airbenders here um so Oh my god, and he's, she's like, yeah, like you guys leave immediately, gun, you see to it that they are able to pack their bags quickly enough so that they can leave by the evening. And Asami is like, nope, I have my uh, you know, maintenance to do, so it'll take one day. <laughs> and we know the reason why the queen does not like animals now, she's allergic. And I'm glad, you know, like she, she was actually <laughs> not comfortable in, because at, at that place, Pabu was there. And she was just sneezing and everything like oh usually it's kind of like you know like wrong and like you know kind of bad in, in these type of situations like you should not be happy that someone is suffering but for the queen I feel like she deserved that she deserves a lot more than that but you know yeah at least like you know she <laughs> kind of got something like you know and uh, yeah so then they start talking about guy where he could be and lake lao guy under lake lao guy that was their first guess and oh boy like i i, I understand now jinora taking jinora here was like uh, a very uh aha, what can i say like a sky decision because you know like she she's so much helpful now you can see like she she knows the spirit and kind of like you know move her body like you know her spiritual body from one place to another like be able to like see the you know like the people where they are kind of scout the whole place all that stuff so <clears throat> yeah she like you know she she was the biggest asset here so she goes first could they go to lake lao guy okay now before that we can see what is happening to guy he's being trained and you know there's other airbenders there as well who are being trained to be the queen's army like oh boy i i would love to see this queen just i don't know somehow lose her queenship or i don't know how that happens you know maybe i don't know how can that even happen you know like she's a queen i don't think she can lose her queenship or something like that maybe if a revolt starts happening but if, if a revolt starts happening then you know like a lot of lives will be lost like yeah uh maybe maybe if the other nation starts putting pressure on her maybe that could change something but i don't know i really want to see this queen somehow fail and lose her you know like her her position of being the queen i don't know if that's possible but we'll see i don't think that's possible but i at least want her to you know somehow in some way you know get punished and get what she deserved like she's doing a lot of wrong things here we can see that huh? So yeah, we get to look Lake Lao guy and uh, Jinora goes in, tries to scout that place out, but there no one is there. So they're like, oh, then what should we do? And Cora is like, can't you do something like you the way you did to me? Because and Jinora's like, we had like a spiritual connection. That's why we were able to do it. 
And Korra's like, wait, don't you have <laughs> have a connection to to Kai? And Tenzin's like, wait a minute, what's this I'm hearing? You know, <laughs> I don't know about this. What is like, you know, what is this connection that Korra is talking about? <laughs> and then <laughs> Jinora, <laughs> Jinora's like, all right, I'll try. And yeah now we can see kai oh my god like here kai was being as we can see like you know being just I mean, obviously not only kai but the other airbenders as well being mistreated and everything so yeah like i i really wanted kai to teach that guy a lesson which we kind of get in the end so i'm happy you know that that guy that the trainer guy who was acting you know like that so <clears throat> Inside the cell, Jinora comes in in her spirit form and Jinora's like, all right, I'm going to get you out and just wait here. And yeah, I'll see to that. We, we not only you, but everyone gets out of here. And we, we know where this place is now. It's under the queen's palace, I think. Yeah, and that's, that's the place. So that's what's happening. Now, here, uh, Wait, what? I always forget her name. What's her name? Lin. Yeah, Lin. Lin Beifong. I don't know why, but I always forget her name. Lin. So Lin comes and Lin is like, all right, we need to get out of here. The end. The, the avatar is in danger. You know, Zaheer and all of them are out. They can, they're going to come here as soon as uh, like, you know, possible. So we need to protect you. So you need to go to the Republic City as soon as possible. Now, here's the thing. I I don't know. I feel like uh, Raiku would not be happy about this, wouldn't he? Like you know, just. Uh, but you know what? I guess who cares about Raiku? <laughs> uh, still, he's the president, so. Yeah, but yeah, we'll see about that. You know, we'll we'll deal with that when that happens. But. Uh, Cora is like. Like, I'm not doing anything before I like, and I help the people here. I've decided to help the airbenders and Kai, and I'm going to do that. So, Lin was like, all right, fine. Like, and I'll also help you guys out. So, oh, and here as well, we get to know the reason why Zaheer is trying, to, not the reasons, sorry, but, you know, like, the fact that Zaheer and his, like, you know, people tried to get kidnapped Korra before. Now, here's a question. As, just like Korra asks them, why are they trying to do that? And no one have that answer for that. Unless and until we get to hear that from their own mouth. Like, you know, mouths. Uh, Zaheer and all of them. So, like, I feel like they, they have, like, a, some kind of grandoise goal or something. Like, they, they were talking about something like that. You know? You know, in the previous episodes. So, maybe that has something to do with Korra. So, I don't know. I feel like... Like, it's not that they were trying to kill her, they were trying to kidnap her. What wasn't it? Let me check. I think they said that like, they were trying to kidnap her. Okay. Uh, shortly after we find, found out you were the avatar, Zahi and the others try, attempted to kidnap you. There you go. Like, this is the key point here, I feel like. They, like, you know, they did not try to kill her, but tried to kidnap her. That's interesting. I, I feel like there's more to this, you know, like they, they are saying that, yeah, your life is in danger, but I don't think Korra's life is in mortal danger. They're, they're, they have some other plans, I think. Otherwise, they would not try to kidnap her, but they would straight up try to kill her because she is the avatar. Since they did not do that and they just tried to kidnap her, that would mean that they need Korra alive, probably because of some of some kind of plan they have. So. Ah, let, like, let's wait for it. I'm, I'm sure it'll be something like that. They're not trying to kill her, but they're trying to just kidnap her. Because they probably need, have some kind of motive where Korra needs to be alive. But yeah, we'll see. We'll see. So, <clears throat> then uh, we, we start our mission to uh, break out all the airbenders. And uh, yeah, so <laughs> Jinora... <laughs> You know, like, you know, kind of tricks them and like starts, like, you know, just knocking out the guards one by one. And they also kind of stealthily go in to the airbender, uh, like, place where all the airbenders are there, kept. And they, like, you know, everyone told them, like, you know, Tenzin is like, all right, you guys get out of here. We need, we're breaking you out. 
and uh, yeah and then this one of them says like that 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 guy i think that kid who was like you know who kai helped out he said like oh there's another airbender here uh, you know like i i think he's not here he's probably somewhere they're like yeah we're, we're doing that we are already on our way to help him out and yeah uh bolin and um <laughs> marco and jinora they break like you know they, they open the door oh my god this scene <laughs> jinora just rushes you know and just goes and hugs <laughs> hugs guy gives him a little kiss and Bo the, the way Bolin reacted here was just so funny. He's like, whoa! <laughs> Tens is not going to be happy about this. And you know, this, this type of reaction, it's just like, you know, like, you're, you're, you're like, yeah, this is going to be good. This will be juicy. Like, you know, like, I'm, I can't wait for Tenzin to find out this whole situation. <laughs> He's just having fun at their expense. He's like, yeah, this will be good. You know, <laughs> this will be a good drama. I'm looking forward to this. <laughs> and Marco can't be bothered, you know. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. And yeah, so they break him out. Obviously, Bolin forgives Sky, but Marco's like, yeah, I, I, I still am not like you know like happy with this thing. But you know what? Yeah, let's get out of here first. They come out, and those three you know Dai Li agents are here. And they start fighting while Korra and the other airbenders come out of the place. And oh boy, the queen is here with the Daidi agents. The queen is like, oh, these people are Earth Kingdom citizens. I am going to do whatever the hell I want with them. You guys are not going to take them out of here. If you try to do that, it will be war. And um, yeah, they try to they cannot stop them. Unfortunately, there's a lot of airbenders here. <laughs> they stop them like you know from coming closer by just airbending that part and <clears throat> yeah the fight starts and the the ship comes in from above asami and lin are in there and okay and they're inside like you know the fight between kai bolin and mako is happening and you know that guy takes uh jinora hostage and kai is just like yeah it's my time to shine he just goes in sweeps in and just defeats the guy <laughs> and in the end he's like yeah i guess i'm as good as i thought <laughs> okay that was that was satisfying you know like he he gave him what he deserved and he got his little revenge as well you can say <laughs> and yeah okay so then they like you know they're, they're outside cora with ugi goes in and Bolin just gives them a little boost. They jump up in the sky and grab onto Ugi. <laughs> the queen is obviously not happy, but unfortunately, you know, the <laughs> Ugi's furs just go into her face and she starts sneezing. And yeah. So here's one thing. What's going to happen now? Like, I feel like the queen is pretty pissed and she might actually really try to wage war. And if that happens, the first thing she's probably going to do is try, like, you know, to get in contact with Republic City and, you know, like, threaten them or say something like, oh, your people, you know, they take, took my citizens from my place and, uh, yeah, we're declaring war or something like that they, he, she might actually do. Like, I, I wouldn't be surprised if she actually starts a war because of this. But we'll see about that. I'm not sure. She might feel like it, it might not be worth the trouble. So she might not do anything at all. Or she might actually wage a war. But we still don't know. So yeah, we'll see about that. But yeah, the queen is not happy at all, obviously. And she might try something again. So okay, now we... Now here's one thing I can see. Like, you know, Tenzin again goes through like a little character development here which i'm very happy about as you can see in the previous episode we could see tenzin just being like oh why wouldn't they be happy to become airbenders you know they you know they should be like you know very happy they should be just uh, so excited they you know they can serve the world or whatever he was like you know all speaking all of those things and he was just like oh you like you know like expecting everyone just to leave everything and <clears throat> 
come with him and he got disappointed when that was not going as he wanted to so here we can see the you know the big character development for him as well because he actually says here that the choice is yours if you don't want to be airbenders we can relocate you to some place safe or if you want to you can join us it's your choice like no one will blame you or say anything if you choose the latter option like it's it's all on you like no problem I like you know be free and i feel like the reason why he went through this development is because he saw the situation in ba Sing Se. the queen was actually just you know like forcing them to become his arm you know her army which was kind of the same thing that tenzin was like you know expecting for them as well he was also expecting that all the airbenders would readily just go and help him out you know to like you know to like build a new air nation or something like that he was just expecting and thought like yeah it's obviously going to happen so even if it's not to that extreme but it's something just similar to what the queen was thinking and the queen was doing as well so he actually realized i'm, I'm sure he realized his mistake and what like you know he realized that i shouldn't have say said it like this or i shouldn't be expecting everyone to just leave their family leave whatever they're doing and just go with us and he realized his mistake i think and he just you know like kind of came to a realization that yeah i should give them freedom and uh, yeah that's why i'm guessing he he actually changed and i'm happy about that you know like and you know when when these like you know people were like all right i'm i'm going to become an airbender they genuinely like you know from their heart they were like yeah i'm going to help you out you know that was even more impactful for him he was so happy you know we can see that he was almost crying like because that's something that's coming from their heart you know you're not forcing them to do anything they from themselves they're like yeah i'm going to help you out i'm going to become an airbender and that's so much more than just forcing someone to help you out you know if someone actually genuinely tries to help you that's so much more than just forcing others or just telling them to do something so yeah this like and this was like a genuine you know thing which was coming from their heart and Tenzin was so happy yeah now Tenzin is like and then they kind of say goodbye Korra says like oh I'm making enemies again and Tenzin is like don't worry you're also making friends so now I'm guessing that they, they kind of split up so I wonder what the team is going to be now like is Asami joining Tenzin or like obviously I, we know like Tenzin is going alongside the airbenders while Korra is on the other team I'm pretty sure Bolin and Marco will be in Korra's team I'm not sure about Asami though uh, Asami might be in like you know the other team with Tenzin because you know her airship or something I'm not so sure about Kai and Jinora as well I feel like Kai and Jinora will be in the same team uh, but like where will they be will they be with, be with the team avatar or will they or will they join Tenzin and go to the air temple i feel like they'll probably join Tenzin like both Jinora and Kai them joining Tenzin and going to the air temple has a big chance of happening so i'm, I'm guessing that's what's going to happen uh, but i'm not so sure about Asami i don't know what she's going to do she is technically the part of team avatar but her airship is with Tenzin so i don't know we'll see uh, i'm guessing i'm i'm sure i'll get to know that what's going to happen in the next episode but they're splitting up basically they're going to republic city while tenzin and his crew are going to the air temples so yeah and that's it that's where it ends uh great episodes and uh, oh boy this is just the <laughs> the beginning i feel zaheer they 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 are all like you know teaming up again and yeah things will be pretty serious after this i'm guessing because they're all at full power now and they're going to come for Korra. so yeah we'll see so that's it guys thanks for watching if you guys enjoyed this video be sure to press the like button and subscribe if you're new to the channel or you haven't subscribed comment down below anything you want to say anything you want to let me know and i will check them out so yeah that's it so that was episode number three and four of the legend of Korra book three so i'll see you guys next week with two more episodes until then goodbye and have a nice day